This week in the bulletin, you will notice there's a little write-up about the Ember Days for Lent. I encourage you uh, to, to partake in these if you're able to. These are days of extra fasting, prayer, and penance for vocations to the priesthood. Also, recently, I, did, I just want to let you know, I did have a meeting with our parish finance council, and, uh, and I have a little brief uh, report or update in the bulletin that just lists some of the things that we talked about to keep you in the loop. I'll try to do that going forward. Um, we are looking for a few more members, and even from uh, the traditional Latin Mass community. In particular, uh, I'm looking for someone who has a skill set of being a good writer and communicator so that this information that we have, that we can have a good way of presenting it that is clear and, and, uh, and, and if someone can help with that. If, if you have that skill set, uh, if you could speak to me and we can see if, if, uh, if, if you might be the right fit. Also, we are planning to give the year-end financial report from the fiscal year 2019 at the end of March. And lastly, the altar servers, uh, I asked for donations for the altar boy cassocks uh, a little while ago, and a number of you were very generous, so we ordered them, got a great deal, and, are, and, and they look awesome, um, but we're not using them yet. So after this Mass, I'm going to, with the servers, we'll go into the sacristy and bless those cassocks and surplices, and then you'll notice uh, in the future going forward that we'll be using them. So thank you to those who supported uh, uh, us uh, with uh, vesting our altar servers well. At that time, Jesus was led by the Spirit into the desert to be tempted by the devil. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, Amen. In the epistle that we read today, we hear of St. Paul speaking in many different ways of kind of the same thing, about, on the one hand, the grace of God, and on the other hand, um, temptation. On the other hand, how we can fall away from, from the Lord and from his path, his will for our lives. For us, we're so grateful to God for his grace in our lives. It's there. It's everywhere. It's what holds us up. Every, all the good things in our life are there thanks to the grace and the goodness of God. And we never doubt that. We don't want to ever doubt that. But also we know in the midst of God's grace, there is bad seed. There's bad seed that has been sown. And there is this presence in all of our lives of temptation. We all experience it every day, being tempted, being tempted to leave the Lord, being tempted to follow a different path. We remember very well the story of Adam and Eve, right? That never leaves our mind. How this apple looks so delicious, so great. How that serpent got into their minds, getting them to think, well, is it really that bad? Maybe there's something really good here. I don't want to miss out. Does God really love me? Is he really good? And they began to doubt the goodness of God. They took that apple and ate from it. And maybe at first it tasted great. We don't know. It doesn't say. But we know uh, afterwards they regretted it forever. It was a big, big mistake. We're still suffering from it today. It's not only the story of Adam and Eve, but it's the story of temptation in our own lives. How many times have we given in to those lies, to those lies that, here, take this, follow this path, it'll be good, trust me. Doubt what you've heard uh, at church, doubt what you've heard from the commandments, doubt the goodness of God. We follow it, and then we see, our eyes are open, and we see how awful it is, and we regret that we ever did it. Temptation is a big part of our lives, and I want to reflect with you a little bit more on temptation in this homily today. Why? Well, let's listen carefully again to this account from the gospel of Jesus going out into the desert. As we are in this time of Lent now, we began with Ash Wednesday this past week. We put those ashes on our foreheads as a sign of penance, as a sign that we are following our Lord Jesus into the desert where he fasted and prayed for 40 days and for 40 nights. And what happened? What happened when he was in the desert? You know, for us, maybe during this time of Lent, we might think, I'm going to focus more, I'm going to pray more, my life is going to be easier, I'm going to get rid of the distractions, everything's going to be great, we're going to have a great Lent. Wouldn't that be wonderful? Um, but listen to what happened to Jesus, because the same thing will happen to you if you try to live Lent really well. It says, at that time, Jesus was led by the Spirit into the desert 
to be tempted by the devil. When Jesus went into the desert, the only thing really that's recorded of those 40 days is that he was tempted by the devil. He was tempted by the devil. For us, we we know, we know from Scripture, we know from the life of Christ and his teachings that the devil seeks our destruction. He is miserable, and misery loves company. He wants people to love him, to follow him. He hates God so much that he just wants to steal souls away from God. He hates you and he hates me, but he hates God even more. And he relishes the thought that he could make God suffer, that he could steal our souls, that we would be in his grasp and that we would be lost forever. And so in our lives, just as it began with Adam and Eve, with that serpent, in our lives, there's a serpent. In our life, there's a great tempter who seeks to destroy our souls, who seeks to lead us away from God. Think about it. How many times do you think you're tempted every day? If you had to say, like what, like 5, 10, 50? I don't know. Think about for me, like, I, I mean, you can think of the big ones. Hopefully the big ones like breaking one of the commandments or seven deadly sins, like in the worst ways. Hopefully those aren't that much. But if you also think of like the smaller things and all the little things in between, if you think about this morning, like did I get up when my alarm clock went off or did I give in a temptation just to lay there a bit longer? If, if, if you think, did I say my prayers right away or did I delay them a little bit or did I skip them or did I shorten them or did I not do them to the best that I, I was able to do? If you think that I do my work, did I, all of these things, right? How many temptations do we experience every day? Probably hundreds, probably hundreds of them every single day. Um, we're constantly surrounded by, by temptation. But of course, as St. Paul says, that's not the only thing, right? We're even more surrounded by the grace of God. And, 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 that, and that demon, that devil, he's, he's on a leash, right? He doesn't have free reign totally over us, but he's on a leash. And God allows him to tempt us um, to, to only up to a certain amount and to a certain degree. Let's come back here to this passage. I want to talk about that more. But uh, it says, at that time, Jesus was led by the Spirit to, into the desert to be tempted by the devil. It is, he did go into the desert to be tempted by the devil. And for us during the time of Lent, you can expect, if you're trying to live Lent well, that you will experience many temptations, maybe even more than last week, maybe even more than before, if you're trying to do it well. The devil, I don't think he cares that much about people who are living in a way that they're not going to go to heaven. He's already got them, right? He's got limited resources, limited demons, limited power. And so he wants to get the most bang for his buck. He goes after more people who are faithful. If you hold up like someone maybe who's uh, struggling from all kinds of things, uh, all kinds of sins, you hold up a saint. Who do you think is going to have more temptations? If this person over here is already in the devil's cross, who cares, right? He's already got them. But this saint, they could inspire many people. They could lead many souls to God. They could bring a whole ship to God uh, when their life is finished. He cares deeply about them, and he strives to disrupt their lives and their faith. And so for us, if we're striving to live a good Lent, expect more temptations, not less. This passage began, at that time, Jesus was led by the Spirit into the desert. The Holy Spirit led Jesus into the desert to be tempted. Isn't that strange? Doesn't that seem, doesn't that seem wrong? Um, why, why would the Holy Spirit lead Jesus to be tempted into the desert so that he can be tempted? Could it be the case that our Lord Jesus has to prove his faithfulness? That in his humanity, he has to prove something to God, to the Father and the Holy Spirit, that he will be faithful, that he will not give up, he will not give in. He will not be overcome. That's not it, right? That's not it. Jesus doesn't need to prove anything. He's perfect God, perfect man. He is completely sinless all the time. He never breaks that. He is totally faithful. His life is a life of complete faithfulness. Adam and Eve's was not. Christ is, absolutely. That's not it. St. John Chrysostom reflects on this a lot. Why, why does the Holy Spirit lead our Lord Jesus into the desert to be tempted? And he says that the reason is so that he could set an example for us. It was not for his sake that he went, but it was for our sake to be a model and example for what? To show us that in the midst of temptation, that there is a pathway through it. We can overcome it. It is possible to be faithful with the help of God. 
For Christ, he was tempted many times. If he's tempted, you bet we're tempted. And he made it through. And so can we, with God's help. Absolutely. Absolutely, we, we can make it through temptation. It's definitely possible. When we think about temptation, at least when I do, I think of it, it's terrible, right? I don't want it in my life. I don't want to think about it. I don't want to have it. I don't want to encounter it. It's just like, get away. This is so negative and so bad. And it's just something to be avoided, right? Avoid at all costs. And there's truth in that, right? Where there's temptation, run. It's better so often just to run the other way and to get away from it. And that's a strategy for, um, I guess, kind of for overcoming it, right? But uh, St. John Chrysostom, he has a different idea. He doesn't say it in these exact words, but this is kind of what he's saying. That temptation is actually a gift from God. Temptation is not just bad like something to grin and bear and to hate. But actually, you can also look at it from another angle. That it's actually a gift from God. Temptation is a gift from God. Think about that for a little while. Try to wrap your head and your mind around this idea. A gift from God. He gives a number of reasons why. And I just want to share a, a few of them with you, with you uh, t- today. First, he says that temptation is there to teach you that you are now much stronger. Temptation comes to teach us that we are much stronger, maybe, than we thought. Uh, if we didn't have temptation, maybe we'd just kind of, uh, just kind of go along, and, but we would become maybe very weak, right? Like an athlete, right? If you don't, even not an athlete, for you and for me, if we don't exercise a bit, we get very lazy, we get very weak, our bodies just kind of, they disintegrate and fall apart. Um, in a similar way for our souls, that God allows us to experience resistance, allows us this tension, this, this temptation, in order to keep us at the top of our game, in order to allow us to build muscle and for our souls to be strong, for our wills to be strong. Another thing, he says that temptation is there that you may be made stronger and better tempered than steel. Not just steel being put into the fire and made straight and maybe pulled in and out and the fire increased and maybe decreased. All of this stuff that goes into making steel and making it into a certain shape. For us, temptation helps us because it gives us experience. We become tempered like steel. We become souls who have been around the block. We've learned a thing or two. We've gone down that road and we know where it leads and we know enough now that we don't want to go down it anymore. Uh, for, for, for us, we can go through, another way of looking at this, we can go through temptations that just kind of run us around in circles. No good comes from it, no benefit. We just go around and around and around. It's negative, it's depressing, it's sad. It gets us off our game. It leads us away from doing God's will. If you think about someone who worries a lot, right? Maybe, maybe that's for you or for me. Where you can get in this cycle of worrying that you just start thinking about it and then it goes around and around and never ends. And it's just, it does end, but it, it can go on for a long time. And what good comes from it? What benefit is there to you? Even our Lord says, why do you worry, right? Do you, do you not know that you have a Father in heaven who loves you dearly, who will provide for you? Or it can even be not just worry, but also in other areas, like maybe in hurts, right? Maybe we've been hurt by someone before and we've, we, we've forgiven them. What we should do is just put that at the foot of the cross and leave it there for Jesus, right? And then we look up and we don't look down at that hurt. But it can happen that the devil tempts us, and it is a temptation, worry, anxiety, and also dwelling on past hurts. It's a temptation to get us off our game. And we can go around in these circles of hurt. I've been hurt, I've been hurt. I hate this person, I'm angry. And, and it just kind of, it, it destroys us, right? It does so much more damage in us. Experience reminds us, I've been down this road, right? I've done this before, I've gone through this cycle. It doesn't lead anywhere. I can identify that's what's going on here. This is a temptation. I don't want I'm not going down that road. And, and we choose not to. And our wills are made stronger because of it. Anytime we overcome temptation, we're strengthened. It makes us better. And then just, um, just maybe two more quick ones. Um, another one he says that by repeated and failed attempts to make you fall, the demons may be utterly assured that you have forsaken them and fallen from their grasp. It could be the case that God sometimes allows us to be tempted to show forth our faithfulness, to mock, to mock the demons, 
and to make them realize that this is a soul that is strong and faithful and who they will not win. This is a soul who is close to God. Good luck to you. And it could be the case that God does that to uh, mirror back to them their own insanity, their own misery. And finally, um, temptation that you may remain humble and not be puffed up by your own greatness, by your own powers, abilities. God allows us sometimes to be tempted in order to keep us humble. You know, we ask, like, why do I go to confession so often? Why do I have to keep going back? Why do I keep falling? Why do all these temptations keep coming? Maybe sometimes give thanks to the Lord for this humiliation, right? That God is keeping us humble. You cannot, you cannot overcome sin on your own. You cannot fight on your own. You don't have enough power. That's the point. The point is that the most important relationship in your life is your relationship with God. The most, the most power that you receive in your life, more than your own strength, is from God. And you need his help to overcome demons. You need his help and his grace to overcome temptation. You cannot do it on your own. So sometimes I think it happens that when we're really puffed up and we're really full of ourselves and really uh, amazed at how great we are, that God will allow a big temptation to come that we can fall so that we can be humiliated, humbled, not to stay there, but so that we see our littleness. We see that we are nothing without God. And then we come back to him with our whole hearts. Today in this homily, with all this talk of temptation, I'm not trying to scare you. I'm just trying to warn you. To warn you that if you're trying to do Lent really well, you should expect to get what, the same thing that Jesus got. Those were temptations. But those temptations aren't the be-all and end-all, right? We can overcome them with God's help. Just because you have a temptation doesn't mean you're sinning. It's only when we give in to them. And we can overcome them. It is possible. The grace is available to you and to me. And so let us ask God a lot for it. Let us see this time not as a time to be discouraged or sad or angry or any of those things that the temptations in our lives, but to see it as a special time of grace, that there's a special gift here for you and for me. These temptations are a gift from God to make us stronger in our faith, to give us more fortitude and courage, and to help us, to help us to be filled with the grace of God, to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Question for this time of Lent. Can you, will you be able to see the temptations that you experience, in the temptations you experience, God strengthening your faith? At that time, Jesus was led by the Spirit into the desert to be tempted by the devil. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen.